Okay, Bro Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist at Choice Hills Baptist Church, Choice right? Hills? In Las Vegas, Nevada. I've uh, heard of that, Choice Hills. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm going to kind of bleed over a little bit uh, 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 on y'all with uh, some stuff that has been going on uh, in my social media ministry, the Facebook and the YouTube stuff. Uh, we know that we are living in the last times. Amen. Okay? As uh, the Apostle Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, he said, in the latter days and in the last times, what? That many shall depart from the faith, give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, yes. that they would not endure sound doctrines, that yes. perilous times should come. Yes. And this is, this is Paul speaking to Timothy in a church age epistle. So we yeah. know he's not talking about the latter days as out beyond the tribulation <laughs> and stuff like that. We're dealing with Israel. This is a church age epistle. He's talking to Timothy. And when he says the latter days, he's talking about the latter days of the church age. That's right. And I would uh, propose to you that we are living <laughs> yeah, in not here. just the latter days, but the last minutes Amen. of the church it's age right and that Jesus Christ Amen. is soon to come and everything we see in this this apostasy this falling away this seducing spirits this falling away from doctrine it's running rampant it, it, it it's exponentially growing all of the major doctrines of this dear old book are being challenged they're being changed people are falling away from them uh, and, and the list goes on and on. In the last couple of days, I have been dealing with people who are trying now to deny the tr biblical truth of eternal torment. An eternal devil's burning hell. And I would like in a few moments here tonight, in a little Bible study, let's stir up our pure minds in the way of remembrance of what exactly the Bible says about a devil's hell. Amen. Amen. Father, we just ask you right now, Lord, bless your book. Take this old jailbird from the slammer out of the way, Father. Uh, just uh, have me to say the words that would help somebody to, to come to know you better and to believe this book like they should. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. 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 Okay, little quiz, little quiz for you tonight. This is kind of weird. This is way up here. And this, but All right, let's do it like that. All right, um, go with me to uh, Mark chapter 9, if you will. Mark chapter 9. And uh, my little quiz tonight is what Old Testament scripture did the Lord Jesus Christ quote more than any other Old Testament scripture? And that's what we're going to answer right now. Okay, that's a uh, uh, that's going to be Mark nice chapter man. nine. We're going to go to the forty fourth. Well, let's start in the forty second verse. Jesus said, "And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee." Cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that shall never, that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. For every one shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Amen. So what did I hear there? I hear the Lord Jesus Christ quoting three times Isaiah 66 and 22. 
I'll just read that at your you can turn if you like. Isaiah 66, 22. Uh, 24. Isaiah 66, 24. And Isaiah writes, And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. So the Lord Jesus Christ quotes this verse three times. One rule of biblical hermeneutics, biblical interpretation, is the rule of repetition. God repeats himself for emphasis. When, when the Lord says something over and over again, he's not just saying it to hear himself talk. There's a reason for it. He's emphasizing something. He's pointing something out. And what I heard the Lord Jesus Christ do right here in this verse about a devil's hell, about hell fire, is say over and over again that the fire is not quenched. Yeah, that's right. So, hell. What, 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 what's hell, all right? Well, you know, in the very beginning, God created the universe, and uh, the, uh, the, the morning stars, the, 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 the little s sons of God, the angelic host sang with him in glory as, 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 he spun, as he spun with the span of his hands the universe and the heavens and, and all, all came into being. And it was one of them cats, one of them little s sons of God named Lucifer, the most beautiful, the, the most powerful of, of, all, of all the angelic host who uh, was uh, created perfect in wisdom and beauty. And he decided uh, being second string wasn't enough for him. He said, I, I, I'm going to rise my throne above God. I'm going to run this show. And he got a third of the angelic host to go along with him. And basically, what did they say to God? What they said to God was, we don't need you anymore. We don't want you anymore. We'll run this show ourselves. Lucifer said, I, I, me, I am, I am, I am. And somehow he began to think that his, his wisdom, his power, and his beauty were an inseparable part of himself and came from himself and not from the one that made him. And, and he got lifted up and we know he and a third of the angels then fell into rebellion and said, God, we don't want you anymore. Feed it. We don't want you. We'll, we'll take over from here. We'll run this show. So God being the gentleman that he is, uh, God says, okay, you don't want me? Well, that's fine. Okay, well, let's just... Make a little place over here for you where I'm not. All right? So, uh, well, we know that every good and perfect thing comes down from the yeah. Father of lights and whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. So all that is good in all in creation in the universe is of God, it is from God. So, you know, if God is what? If God is love, uh, this place that I'm going to have to make for you is, is going to be a, pla a place of hate. And, and, and if God is light, this is going to be a place of darkness. And if God is the source of every pleasure, this is going to be a source of pain. And if God is the source of joy, this is going to be a place of misery. And when you remove God from the equation, when you remove His presence from anything, all you have left is its opposites. You have the, the emptiness, you have the doom, you have the misery of a place without God, and that is hell. And a third of the angelic host, that place was reserved for. Why, why didn't he just wipe them out? Free will. Because they were created for the purpose of serving and worshiping God through all eternity. They were built to last. They weren't built to be destroyed. They were built to exist with their Creator, serving and loving and worshiping Him for all eternity. So they had to be somewhere for all eternity. They don't want to be in the presence of God, so God makes a place. And that's what that's what we read in Matthew chapter 23.
Matthew chapter 23 and verse 41. Mm. What? I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 25. Mm. 25 and 41. If my notes are so far from me here, I can't read, I can't, I can't read my own writing. All right, Matthew 20, 25 and 41. Uh, all right, here's what, here's what he says. Then, he, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Everlasting fire. Well, if we get everlasting life, they get everlasting fire. And this is the place prepared for the devil and his angels. We read a little bit more about that in Jude. Right before Revelation, verses 6, 7, and 15. Rev 6 to 15. Oh, no. Verse 6, verse 7, and verse 15 of the book of Jude. Thank you. And the angels, verse 6, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. An example, a type, a foreshadowing of the lake of fire is what happened at Sodom and Gomorrah. Suffering the vengeance of of eternal fire and then verse 15 13 I'm sorry raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever that's that's the fallen angels that's their place that is their that is their destination. That is their future. So then God creates a man. We know, we all know over there in Genesis that he, he forms man of the dust of the earth and he breathes into man the breath of life and man becomes a living soul. So that's what you are. And we read over a little further. He said, and, and God created them in his own image and likeness. So a man is a living soul created in the image and the likeness of God. All right? So you've never seen me a day in your life. All you've ever seen is my body. I've never seen you. All I've seen is your body. See, you, you, are, you are inside of your body looking out. They say, you know, the eyes are the windows to, windows to the soul. See, you're inside of there looking out at me. And I'm inside of here looking out at you. And, and, and someday... Someday we're going to put off this old house and we're going to get a new house for our soul. But your soul, that's your mind, that's your will, that's your emotions, that is the essential you. That is the eternal part that God created what? In His image. In the same way that you, that mankind as sons of God, little less sons of God, mankind was created like the angelic host as sons of God to what? to enjoy God's presence forever. A man was, was created to enjoy God's presence forever. That's what your soul was supposed to do. That's what it was built for. So just like the angelic host, your soul has to be somewhere forever. It was built to last. It's built indestructible. It's built in the image of God to share fellowship with God for all eternity. That's what the soul was created for. So the soul doesn't get burned up or destroyed. What you, when you talk to an atheist, you talk to an atheist, and they, you tell, well, what do you think happens when you die? 
What did I tell you? Well, that's, that's over. That's it. Right? Yes. Nothing. Nothing. It's over. There's nothing. It's just done. That's what an atheist will tell you. <clears throat> that's what a lot of supposedly Bible-believing Christians are beginning to say. They are beginning to say that in Revelation, where it says death and hell is cast into the lake of fire, that that's it, that it's annihilation. That's the word they use. That's the term for this. It's annihilationism. The doctrine of annihilation, that the lake of fire just burns everybody up, and that's it. Suffering's over. That's it. End of the story. End of program. That is the doctrine that is permeating Christian circles today, and some previously sound Bible teachers are starting to buy into this. Revelation chapter 20. So, why would they want to do that? Why would a person want to lower the stakes on this thing. Because that annihilation, that is a doctrine of the Jehovah Witness. It's a doctrine of the Seventh-day Adventist. This, it, why would anyone want to take the sting out of hell? Well, the only reason I would say you would want air-conditioned hell was if you were going there. Amen? So that's why these folks want to air-condition hell. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10. Let's see who's going to hell and how long it lasts. Verse 10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. Okay, so they're already there. Now the devil gets thrown in. So the devil's there, the beast is there, and the false prophet there are. Okay, and what? And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Well, it, as far as this annihilation goes, I'll give you three right now that for sure, for sure, for sure are not getting annihilated on the authority of the Word of God. He said, that's where they are, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So as far as who's going to hell and burning forever, right now we can lock in three. Amen? The devil, the beast, and the false prophet. Okay? Let's see. Where, let's move on from there. Uh, let's go to Revelation 14. Revelation 14, we'll start in verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. Okay, so this is during the tribulation. This is during the time of Jacob's trouble. This is during Daniel's 70th week. This is during the time when God is coming back to, uh, uh, to regather Israel unto himself. All right, we're, this is after we're gone, man. This is after the rapture of the church. That's another teaching. That's another video. That's another service. Maybe we'll do that Sunday. <laughs> but, but for right now and for this, this is during the tribulation period. And this is talking about anybody, anybody in the world. And the Bible says that the whole world wonders after and worship, worships the beast. So this is a whole bunch of folks. This is a whole bunch of folks. It, it, it's, hey, coming through this tribulation is going to be just a remnant. Just a remnant. You talk about wide road and narrow road, uh, hey, many there will be that will die and go to hell in this tribulation. Very few. because it's, it, it's easy now. This is the age of grace, praise God. We can just receive Amen. the finished, uh, finished salvation and be bang, bang, boom locked in and seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus good to go during the tribulation it's not like that anymore during the tribulation you've got to resist this mark you got to walk this thing out again during the tribulation period look it you, you may be saved in the tribulation but it probably cost you your head <laughs> but so he goes he goes on to say right here he says that's if anybody verse 10 the same this anybody takes a mark the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture. Remember that wrath of God. The wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest 
day nor night, who worship the beast and receive his image, whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So there's another, here's some more. We have the Pretty beast, clear. the false prophet, and the devil. They're there burning forever and ever and ever. Now, there's anybody in the tribulation that takes the mark of the beast. It just says right there, they have no rest day and night. The smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. It's pretty clear. So we got the we got the devil, we got the false prophet, we got the antichrist, and we got every unsaved person through the entire tribulation. They're all going to hell. They're all going to the lake of fire, and they're going to burn and forever and ever and ever. Now, First John, I think we can add a, a couple couple folks to that. Mm -hmm. First John chapter two, verse eighteen. Talk about the, the Antichrist and all those who worship the Antichrist in the tribulation. Well, here's what John. Here's what John said, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Amen. So. Verse 19 says, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So there's many antichrists. Many antichrists. He said, he said that the spirit of antichrist, he said, would eat, would eat, he said was even, is even now in the world. And it's working in the many antichrists. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 1. Now we're, we're, getting, we're, we're breaking it down now. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Oh, hallelujah. Huh? Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, we were dead. We were dead in our sins and trespasses. We had that wrath of God abiding over us, just waiting. Only just the grace and mercy of God, just holding that wrath. Think of that, that wrath like a mountain, a mountain just waiting just to fall and, and, and crush you. And it's just the mercy and the love of God holding that wrath back, that deserved wrath, that wrath that we earned. That, that, that holy, just wrath from a pure and a holy God. But he's holding it back. Hey, he would be perfectly, perfectly, perfectly just. And nobody could gainsay him one little bit if he just wiped it us all out and sent us all to hell. He would be absolutely, perfectly just in doing that. But he holds that, he holds that wrath back. And you had the quickened who, who were dead in trespasses and sins. And the Lord Jesus Christ came in a time appointed and on his perfect sinless self, hanging there on Calvary's cross, he took the eternal torment, he took the price, he took the wrath that is owed by every single man, every single woman, every single boy, every single girl that has ever been born in all of space, time, and eternity. He took their wrath in a moment of time on Calvary's cross. And somebody says, how could that be? How could that one man right there pay for every single sin of every single person who was ever born? And I'll tell you, because that one life was worth more than all the rest of us put together. Amen. And that's what he did. And we were dead, and he has quickened us. And because of the finished work, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, he is able to send his own self in the person of his own spirit and become one with us in our hearts and seat us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're in him, and he's in us. Hallelujah. By grace, through faith. Amen. And man, that's what happened. We were those children of wrath, but not anymore. You had the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Verse 2, where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You were one of those little antichrists. Each and every one of us were subject to that spirit of the devil. Huh? That's a, the prince of the power of the air. 
the God of this world. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual dark wickedness in high places. So what was different between the Antichrist and the false prophet and any one of us before we were saved? Basically nothing. We were just a person being used and controlled by demonic spirits. Basically the same thing. Hey, they, he, he, he just got a more powerful devil, that's all. We just have some, we, we just have probably had some little, little penny, penny ante demons running us. The, the Antichrist gets Satan himself uh, uh, for, for, a, for a possessing spirit during the tribulation. So that, that's, that's no different. But it, what? The Antichrist and the false prophet going to the lake of fire and being tormented and burning day and night forever and ever? Because we're the same thing. We are people who are children of wrath. We were being used by the spirits of the air. We were being controlled by Antichrist spirits. There's only two spirits. There's the spirit of this world, and there's the spirit of God. No, in, there's no in-between. Jesus told them, said, you're of your father, the devil. If you're not born again and placed in the, 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 the family of God and become a son or daughter of God, then you're still a child of the devil. And you're controlled by the devil and the wrath of God abides upon you. So, when we think about this annihilation, we're talking about taking lowering the stakes. Lowering the stakes. The stakes are eternity. The stakes aren't, eh, do a week in the county jail and get out. No. The stakes, the stakes are, we, you know, what, as we used to say in the penitentiary, all day. Somebody's got life and they're never getting out. How long you got, bro? I got all day. See, we're talking about all day. And it's an eternal day. It's a long day. It's eternity. It's not, I got what I, what I got. Well, uh, I'm going to burn for a few years and then they're going to throw me in the lake of fire and it's all going to be over. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That's lowering the stakes. Not only is it lowering the stakes, it is also a great insult and blasphemy to what was accomplished by our Lord on Calvary's cross. Yeah. He didn't hang on that cross and take a little slap in the hand for you and I. He hung on Calvary's cross, and in a moment of time, he suffered an eternal torment. Because he's an eternal being, because it was an eternal penalty, don't ask me how he could do it, I don't know. Maybe he'll tell us when we get there. But somehow, someway, in that hour, in that time, he suffered your eternal torment, my eternal torment, everybody's eternal torment is what he suffered. So when he when he looked up and he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This man had been forsaken like no other had been forsaken. This man was talking about eternal forsaking, and he was forsaken so that we would never be. And to say that he didn't do that, he didn't pay that penalty, he didn't go through that, Listen, that's that's not that's not the Jesus of my Bible. Amen. And Amen. that's what he tell that's what Paul tells us over in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He says uh, he said I'm godly over you with a godly jealousy. He says I've espoused you to to uh, uh, one husband, even to Christ. He said I fear that as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety that your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For he that cometh preacheth another Jesus what? Or another spirit? What? Or another gospel? Yes, there is another Jesus. And that's what's being put out today in these last in these last days and in these last times of the church age where many are falling away. They will not endure sound doctrine. They are offering a different Jesus that is not the Jesus of the Bible. And you see it, you've got you got this Jesus TV show now, you've got this, this this hippie 60s Jesus movie coming out now. It's a big push. You've got, you got this big phony revival thing going on at, at these colleges. It's this big push right now. It, I'm telling you, it, it, it's getting the world, it's getting the world ready. 
It's getting the world ready for the one world religion of the Antichrist when it comes, where there will be no doctrine, there will be no standard. Oh, we're all we're all just gonna come together and go, kumbaya, kumbaya. You might even throw in a little hostile shandai tayanan tayabotai who stole the mahanda or whatever. Huh? It's all gonna be about feelings, emotion, experience. It's all good. We accept everything. Come on in. Unity for the sake of unity. And that's what that's the push right now. And that's why this is the most hated, this is the most hated thing in this world on this planet right now is the is the living words of the living God. And everything that is in here that we know as Bible believing Christians is now being questioned, is being changed, and it's being corrupted. And I'll close with this. They say, they say <clears throat> that when we get to the great white throne of judgment, and it says, and, 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 and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, they say, that's it. That's it. Game over. No more suffering. No more punishment. All right? Go with me. Revelation chapter 21. First verse. And I saw what? A new heaven and a new earth. Okay? So uh, we just we just got past the great white throne of judgment, uh, which began in verse 11 of chapter 20, and uh, then verse 14 of, uh, of the previous chapter, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And now we get to chapter 21, and I saw a new heavens and a new earth. So this is this is past the great white throne of judgment. This is past the uh, death and hell being cast into the lake of fire. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And uh, it says, I, John, saw the holy city in Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and God shall wipe all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow no crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away and he's he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful he said, and he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I'll give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely, and he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I'll be his God, and he shall be my son. Now look at verse 8. Look who's still there. But the fearful, and the unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and the whoremongers, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And then go to chapter 22 and verse 15. And we see this, we see right, right here, it's talking about a river of water of life uh, out of the throne of God and the Lamb and the, and, and the, the, the 12 manners of fruit on the tree of life on either side and, and there would be no more a, a curse the, the the lamb's going to be in it and all that's going on and uh, you get down to verse 15 for without are not were are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie they're still there where are they at they're in, they're in that place that God prepared for the devil and his angels because each and every one of them, just like the angelic host, were built to last, indestructible, and have to be forever somewhere. Thank God, thank God, thank God that if we know Christ as our Savior, if we have received the free gift of salvation paid for by the death, burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, Praise God that 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 will never even be a, consider, a consideration because we know that we know that we know that we know that that we are His and and, and we're going to be with Him in that glorious city. But uh, but let's not take the sting. Let's not lower the stakes because there's a lot of people 
that are going to be without that city. Even after the great white throne of judgment and for all eternity. It's a sobering thought, but it's a biblical truth that we cannot compromise in these last and evil days. I hope that uh, it stirred up somebody else's mind in the way of pure mind and the way of remembrance as it did mine. God bless you all. Thank you for that. Let's, let's pray. Father, I, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for the blessing of, of, of being here at Choice Hills Baptist Church uh, uh, with uh, my, my good brothers and good sisters here. And uh, what, a, what, what, a, what a blessing just, just to be here and get to speak your word anywhere, God, from a, from a, for in front of a camera to, to out on a street corner and in a church or to wherever, God. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord. Uh, of going and telling people the good news of the death, burial, and resurrection, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that, that someone, someone may be saved from this eternal devil's burning hell. In Jesus' name, amen.